Another quick tutorial, I want to cover a subsection of the previous tutorial where we created this awesome snow scene. So let me just play something for you real quick. Let me go to my solid view. So right here, you guys see all these particles that we have um, being scattered. I just want to show you guys how I did that. A lot of you guys, I'm sure, will ask me, how do you create something like this? It's actually really, really simple. So let me go ahead and open up a new document, new general. I'm going to save the current or the previous one. I'm going to delete everything, literally everything um, in the scene. I'm going to add in an icosphere and then I'm going to pop this little drop down, down, down here. And I'm going to reduce the subdivisions. As you can see, we have this really simple shape. I'm going to go to my side view. I'm going to scale this down a bunch, move it up on the Z axis and I'm gonna to begin to duplicate it, okay? So let's just go ahead and duplicate it a bunch of times. And then once we have a nice little chunk here, we're gonna duplicate that, and you guessed it, keep repeating the process over and over again. There's really no method to this. I'm just making as many pieces as I can as quickly as possible. You could use an array modifier, but this is fine too. All right, so we have all of our pieces right here. Just go ahead and add in a force field, add in a turbulence force field, move it up to like just the middle area right here, and then go ahead and add in a strength of 100. Now we want to apply the physics to these. So click on one of the icospheres, add a rigid body, active, convex hull, everything's fine, default. And then you want to shift, hold shift, and click and drag everything else. Go to object, rigid body, copy from active. All right, so now let's go ahead and just play this and see what it looks like. So as you can see, everything is going to fall down. That is because we have to turn gravity off. Go into your scene settings here, turn off gravity. Now play your, uh, your simulation back. And as you can see, we have this awesome dispersion of particles. Now what's really cool about this is not only was this super simple to create in less than like two or three like minutes, I could probably do it in seconds if I wanted to. You can now go ahead and drop down your hierarchy on the, on the right here. Just move all the way to the bottom so you can find your turbulence force field. Click this little drop down, click on this little arrow, and then click the arrow on turbulence so that you can't select the turbulence force field anymore. And basically what you're doing when you select that, you're just saying, hey, I cannot select this anymore. Um, click on all these, scale them down, go to your side view. You guessed it, duplicate again. Um, and then you can duplicate as many times as you want. Let me just save this real quick because I have a weird feeling it might crash. I'm going to call this might crash. <laughs> save that to the desktop and let's go ahead and play this back and see what it looks like. Oh boy. Okay, it is actually playing. It's just taking a quick second. <laughs> All right, it's playing very, very, very slowly because I'm recording, streaming. I have like 10 different programs open right now. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our rigid body world. We're going to go to cache and we're going to bake this to frame 50. I'm going to click bake. Give this a second. As you can see at the bottom, it's saying 24%. It's going to run through every frame. It's going to bake. And as soon as it's done, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. Is everybody on Instagram happy so far? Thanks a ton. No problem. Not an issue. It's been like 55 minutes. It actually wasn't bad for an hour like the amount we accomplished and covered in an hour was actually a lot because um, we covered modeling lighting um just setting up a scene like setting up render settings i mean we, we covered a decent bit so there was a lot to take from that last tutorial all right the bake is almost done we just need to give this a few more seconds here let me rehydrate while that bakes there guys i'm super excited to play play this back it's done. Let's go ahead and play it back and see what it looks like. That looks awesome. So guys, um, I just want to show you, I, I just, I think it's really cool, especially when you look from like the side view and you play it back, like the way that it disperses is just super interesting. Now what's really cool is you can go back to your turbulence force field and you can adjust it however you like. Um, Baking simulations is not my favorite thing to do. My computer usually can handle this right off the bat, but since I'm streaming, recording, it's having trouble doing everything all at once. I only bake to frame 50, but I just wanted to show you guys a quick way to like disperse particles um, without having, to, I hate using particle emitter. I just don't like it. Um, you can call me out if you want. I, I actually like using real physics simulations because it's just so much more satisfying. Um, and you know you're getting something like real. Like particle emitters are great, they have their place. I just, I like doing stuff like this better. 
How cool does that look? You're not going to be able to achieve that with particle emitter, I don't think, um, unless you apply physics to it. And I just feel like this is so much simpler. You know exactly what's going on here. You know that each one of these has the exact same physics settings. You know you can control your turbulence. And if you really wanted to, you could animate your turbulence force field, move it up and down. You, you can animate it from zero to 100. Here, let's do that. Um, let's go ahead and make sure we can click on it again. Let me go all the way down to our bottom of here. Let me go to our turbulence so that we can select that again. I'm gonna go to frame one and I am going to go over to my turbulence force field settings. And strength is 100 right now. I'm gonna start it at zero. All right, I'm gonna insert a keyframe. I'm gonna hover over this and click I. And then I'm gonna go to frame 20, or sorry, frame, how about frame five? And I'm gonna make it 100. Now let's do 10, let's do frame 10. All right, now I'm gonna make it 100. So it's gonna go from zero to 100 within 10 frames. And then let's go back to our physics world and let's bake it out to, or let's delete the bake and bake it to frame, I don't know, 30. Keep it simple. Click bake and let's see what happens. It's gonna start fast and then it's gonna slow down. Just give it a second. So it's gonna bake out the frame 30. So what I have a feeling is going to happen is we're gonna start out with just this nice little grid and then all of a sudden it's gonna disperse very, very quickly. Um, and I'm super excited to see how that looks because I just wanna show you guys what's possible with physics simulations. Um, a lot of it is experimenting, to be honest, and figuring out what looks best for your situation, your project. But I, I love physics simulations, um, and I know you guys do too. And to be honest, they take the longest to do because there's so much trial and error to get things correct. Um, so when you guys see me putting out a physics simulation tutorial or a reel, there's hours of work that go into me trying to perfect that. So. There's a lot of trial and error. All right, let's see what this looks like. So we're gonna play it back and around frame 10, it should disperse, I think. Yep, there you go. So as you guys can see, it starts out not doing much and then boom, it just starts to disperse out of nowhere. Now I only baked the frame 30, so I apologize, but I do still think that it just looks like awesome. And what's really cool is you can go to any single frame you like. Let's say you really like frame 20, you could snap to your camera and you could render that frame. Um, and again, this works with any physics objects. Um, these don't have to be icospheres. I just chose these because they're super, super simple to, um, to set up. To be honest, a cube is even simpler. Um, you could probably even do it with a plane. I don't know, let's try it. And then we're gonna wrap up this tutorial because I've spent way too much time on this tutorial already. I pretty much went over the basics, but let me go ahead and delete all these things. Um, and then let's go ahead and add in a, oops, I missed some. Let's add in a plane. Let's just scale it down a bunch. And I think I should be able to apply a rigid body to that. Yep, active. All right, let's just see what happens with our plane. Looks like it is affected by our, by our force field here. And I actually want to delete the bake, of course. All right, so it is affected by our force field. I'm not sure why, but it's almost drawn to the force field. Let me duplicate this a few times because I want to see like what's happening here. All right, let's go ahead and watch what happens now. Oh, I don't know why is it only going to frame 30? Oh, oops, let me try that, hold on. I don't know why I was doing that, guys, I'm sorry. There we go. So, you know what's really interesting about this? They almost look like little pieces of paper floating around. Let's go ahead and end that at frame 200, there we go. It's super interesting to watch this happen because you really don't know what's gonna happen. Um, it almost looks like confetti. I'm just trying to show you guys different ways you can experiment with the physics properties of Blender because it's honestly really fun to just mess around with. Um, and we can learn in the process. Like you know that a turbulence force field, if it's positive, it just throws things all over the place. But what if it was negative? Let's just see what it looks like. I don't think it's gonna be too much different, but let's check it out. Um, so it is keyframed right now. I'm gonna delete the keyframes. Oops. Let me highlight these, X, delete keyframes. And let's go back to frame zero. And let's do strength negative 100 and let's see what that looks like. Honestly, it doesn't look too different. They're just going like the other way. But how cool is that, that you can just spread out all these particles? I, I just think that's incredible. Um, now let's go back to our side view. Let's make sure we can't select our turbulence, highlight everything else. And let's go ahead and really make some small particles here. I can't even barely see what I'm doing because these are so thin. All right, now let's play it back and see if uh, see if Blender can handle that. 
Whoa. How cool is that? So guys, that's just like pretty much a quick way to handle like some turbulence force fields. Again, I'm just trying to put out some quick tutorials for you guys to learn. There's just so much to learn. It's just so much fun. Um, like we could create a whole confetti simulation in, in like a minute, just based on this. Um, and again, you can change your force field to whatever you want. Uh, that was turbulence. Let's go ahead and try something else. Let me go all the way down to my the bottom here. Instead of turbulence, you could do force, and you could do point, and what is it, negative 100? So let's just go ahead and see. I think a negative force field should attract everything inwards. Let's go ahead and check this out. Yep. And as you can see, everything is attracted inwards towards the center mass of the force field. Pretty cool. It's an easy way to create a magnetic simulation. Now if we do the reverse, outwards force of 100. Let's go ahead and watch what happens now. Everything just goes zoop. <laughs> it said bye bye. Now it's really cool. And what's really awesome is we can do the same thing we did last time, which is we can have it go all the way out and then right back in. So if we wanted to do that, we would start it at 100, keyframe that. Why is this not working? Oh, there we go. All right, so keyframe that at 1, go out to frame 30. Now at frame 30, you decide. You want to keyframe it one more time, and then at frame 40, you want it to do negative 100. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So it should spread out and then come right back in. Oh, boom. Whoa. I mean, what the heck just happened? That was cool. So again, guys, just trying to show you like a quick way to do this. We go out to frame 250. I want to. I just want to play that back one more time, show you guys what was happening there. So it goes out, and then it says, "Wait, wait, wait." Now we have negative force field. Let's go back in. Then they all collide, kind of go back out, and then they kind of go to center mass here again. And you can just create these really, really cool physics simulations. Super easy and super, super fun and effective. So I just wanted to show you guys like how to do things like this. Um, you could create sparks coming off of a fire i mean the possibilities are like actually endless um especially when you start bringing in like collision objects and things like that so i mean i have like a million ideas just for more tutorials just looking at this right now um you could and and it's more or less pretty realistic i don't know what kind of forces there would be in real life that are like this but you decide what you want to do with this knowledge so i hope you guys enjoyed this i just wanted to go over some force field stuff today um, so I will see you guys in the next tutorial.